Good morning. A Merry Christmas and good tidings to all. On this last Sunday in 2021, there's a warm welcome to every single one of you, to members of the Lausen, to their guests, and to all those visiting. We hope you enjoy our short family service this morning. There's no Sunday school or teen scene. And if this is your first time here, that we can persuade you to come back soon. No crash today, uh, but any child who gets bored may take mum or dad across to the hall at any time and use the facilities there. Well, another year has nearly run its course. And there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that in one way or another, we're enjoying a spell of overindulging in everything. At least I was. Probably eaten too much turkey, goose, nut roast, chocolate or cream or all of them. And probably there's already evidence that our trousers or skirts are shrinking. And no, it's not due to the damp conditions prevailing. So with COVID and all, another period of self-discipline and willpower is required. The good news, of course, and all of us know it's really good news, is that the Lord is with us and will be with us, every single one of us, all through 2022, if we let him. That's what we came here to celebrate, so let's celebrate our togetherness in Christ, our togetherness in God's family, sharing a greeting with our nearest neighbors and friends by signing to each other, God loves you. Of course, everyone is on holiday this week, and as you know, there are no, there's no allowances, our usual midweek service, on Thursday. So Reverend Carden will doubtlessly be desperately looking for something to do <laughs> for a change. Next Sunday, we again meet for worship at 11 o'clock and welcome the new year here with a family service. Finally, those wishing to take communion are asked to stay at the end of the service using the special cups you were handed as you came in. Folks, it really is good to come together to worship God. Our intro to the service is joy to the world, the Lord is come. Please stand to sing. <laughs> see people here today 
because it's not often that Christmas falls on a Saturday, but that means that we've always got activities on Friday, on Christmas Eve, and then Saturday, which is the Christmas Day, and then the Sunday as well. And what happens is we tend to see bits of people over all three of, of those occasions. So it is good that we take this time out and come into God's house. It's good that we still hold all of the season of Christmas in our hearts. And it's good that we come to rejoice and celebrate together in God's house. So we're going to sing again. Long time ago in Bethlehem, Mary's boy child. to God. Let us pray. Lord, we come to your house. We come to celebrate the fact that you came, Emmanuel, God with us. And it is good that we have time to celebrate as your family. And it is good that we take time out in your presence. Forgive us, Lord, when we make Christmas into something that is so busy that you get pushed to one side. Forgive us when you're left under the Christmas tree while we get on with everything else, only adding you on to the process instead of you being at the heart of the process. And we are here today to make sure that you stay at the heart of the process. Lord, in this short time together, as we look at your word and read passages to remind us of this time, and as we come to you in prayer, as we sing praise to you, we pray that you would touch our hearts once again, that you would rekindle flames in our hearts or even start a fire that was never there before. That yesterday can be forgotten. For Lord, we know that because of your great love, yesterday can be forgiven. And that we can move on from this day, knowing your presence, now and forevermore. We ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I'm going to do the first of the readings, and it's from Matthew's Gospel, and it's starting from verse 18. The birth of Jesus Christ. This was how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she found out that she was going to have a baby by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was a man who always did what was right. But he did not want to disgrace Mary publicly. So he made plans to break the engagement privately. While he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife. For it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will have a son and you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this happened in order to make come true what the Lord had said through the prophet. A virgin will become pregnant and have a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So when Joseph woke up, he married Mary as the angel of the Lord had told him to. But he had no sexual relations with her before she gave birth to her son. And Joseph named him Jesus. Amen. To all of the youngsters who are at home, probably still playing with stuff that you got yesterday or trying on something that you got yesterday. You know, when I was young, you know, it was nice that people got me something to wear, but that's not what I was really interested in. You know, clothes, that wasn't, when I was young, it was more about the other gifts. And the clothes came later. And it's good that we can enjoy Christmas and take this time. The thing is that sometimes we concentrate so much on the gift that we forget about what this is about. Sometimes we've got so many gifts that we're too busy planning what we're going to do with this one and that one and the next one. Now, it's good that we can have time and it's good that we've got time out of school but it's also good to remember why we got them in the first place. It's also good to remember that Christmas is, of course, about Jesus. It's about a baby who was in the manger. And I have this little thing that whenever we look at a gift, maybe we should think, whenever we pick it up, about why we got the gift. Because it's Christmas. You see, if we're not careful, we just pack everything away and we totally forget about it. And it's like, you know, when, when you get a puppy and they say to you, remember that a puppy isn't just for Christmas, it's for life. Well, it's exactly the same with the Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas is celebrating the fact that he came, but it's for life. And if we forget that that's what Christmas is about, then the biggest gift and the best gift that we could ever have is the one that we've left behind. So today, in this short time together, it's that reminder to hang on to the Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be another song here reminding us of what this is all about. Away in a manger. Let's stand to sing.
So, another reading. This is the reading that we did yesterday morning. And it says, The birth of Jesus. At that time, Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own hometown. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in cloths, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. Amen. Another beautiful old carol in the bleak midwinter. Let's bring before the Lord our prayers for others. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come here today, 
we recognize that while we celebrate, for many, the world is a very hard place to live. And whilst this might be Boxing Day, their circumstances have not changed. And the reality of the hardship that they face is just as real now at Christmas time as it was before. And Lord, it is sometimes that we feel so helpless, not knowing what we can do and how we can make a difference. And our prayer for this year, Lord, is that you will show us what more we can do to try to make a difference. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling. We pray for those who don't have the resources to get through the next week or even the next day. We pray for those whose lives are chaos and have, they have no idea what today and tomorrow will bring. We pray for those who have nowhere to call their home. Lord, something that you completely understand. We, Lord, pray for those who are lonely right now, without having the families and friends to be able to share. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, and those who know that there is no long-term solution to their sickness or their problems and issues. Lord, we pray for families who try to support loved ones. And as we struggle to know what the needs are and how to sort the problems out, Lord, you have all resources at your fingertips. And you know the love and the comfort and the strength you know exactly what is required to make a difference in the lives of the ordinary individual. And we pray that you would draw close, that you would bring the right people into the right place at the right time, that our world would be a better place in which to live, and that hearts will be touched for you once more. And Lord, we take a few moments of silence while we bring before you those who we too carry in our hearts. Lord, we know that you hear our prayers and we thank you for your faithfulness. And we ask, Lord, that you would indeed draw close to us. That we would know your love, your peace, your joy, your hope, not just for Christmas, but for life. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So our next reading is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. Shepherds and angels. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. 
When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. Let's sing again. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Let's journey on with the story in Luke's Gospel. Jesus is named. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name which the angel had given him before he had been conceived. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons, as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man, and he was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child into the temple to do for him what the Lord required, Simeon took the child in his arms 
and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you may let your servant go in peace. With mine own eyes, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and to bring glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. <clears throat> he will be a sign from God, which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. There was a very old prophet, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She had been married only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. Amen. When we come to Christmas every year, we, we tend to have our own traditions and our own routines, even with our own families. You know, whose house do you go to? Do people come to you or do you go to them? You know, when do you open your presents? Do you open them as soon as you get up in the morning? Uh, do you go to church? Do you open them when you get back? Are you waiting for other people to arrive and you open all your presents together? It's amazing how we make our own traditions even out of the tradition that is Christmas. And even the tradition to put up Christmas trees, which came from the Victorian era, and decorations and stuff like that. It's amazing how all of that has found its way into our personal traditions. And the last little passage that was read there was about a tradition. It was in the Jewish law about having the child dedicated, given back to God, if you like, the firstborn male. And this whole scenario being at the temple, I want you to think for a moment of what this youngster Mary would have been thinking. She's trying to keep all this stuff into, she's trying to process it all. And it's all falling out before her. You've got the, the business of her seeing the angel, being told what was going to happen. Then you've got the shepherds turning up when she's in a, in a stable, just trying to make the best of things. And now she goes to the temple. Notice the little significant thing in there that they were taking two doves or pigeons, which is a sign that they weren't, they were very poor. They didn't have enough to be able to bring something bigger to be sacrificed. That's all that they could afford. And there they are, in poverty, being told by these respected holy people about what God has intended for this child. And notice the little warning that Simeon gave her as well. And during this pregnancy, she has, obviously this child has grown in her, the Holy Spirit has touched her, the child has grown in her, but that's only been part of the journey. And in a sense, whatever has gone on before until that time, now that the child is born, her journey is just beginning. And from there on in, she has to hang on to all these precious things that were told her to keep her inspired as time gets rough. And it will get rough. She might already have had a bit of a rough time with people thinking that, well, she was pregnant, she's been at the capers because she wasn't married. And now she's got this child and poor, poor Mary, she's standing there, Simeon's warning her, you know what, mate, if you thought it was bad, it could get worse, you know? What is she to make of all of this? And yet she is blessed knowing that God is with her. God is with them. 
God is with us. And when you think about it, the faith that we have, the God-given faith that we have, requires the Holy Spirit. It requires the Holy Spirit to touch us and just ignite something, no matter how tiny that little flame is. And just as that child grew inside Mary, that faith needs to grow inside us. And it needs to be nurtured and it needs to be fed as our lives journey on. And we feed it with the word of God. That's why times like this are so important. That we can pick up on the scriptures. That we can delve into it together. That we get a greater understanding of who Jesus is and what this is all about. And why it matters and why it should matter to us. And as we feed on the word of God and as we talk to God in prayer. And as we worship, our faith starts to grow fed by the word, by the Holy Spirit, by the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, our faith in us starts to grow. But it doesn't stay just inside of us because we too have to journey on, just as Mary and Joseph and this little one were going to have to journey on. They were going to leave the safety of the temple, if you like, and all these fine words that were spoken and move on. And as Christians, we have to journey on too. Because just as this child was born for a purpose, so are we. Every single one of us is valuable in the sight of God. Born for a purpose. Born to live for him. Touched by the Holy Spirit. That makes you special. And fed and nurtured. And there are times, folks, when it is going to get tough. And I mean really tough. And there's times when you're going to scratch your head. Can you imagine how Mary felt? Can you imagine how she felt when this child grew up? Can you imagine how she felt when he went to the cross? What would that have done to our faith? And yet, you know what she had? She had those words of Simeon and Anna She had the events of the stable to hang on into, knowing that God was not going to let her down and would help her to journey on no matter what the future was going to unfold in front of her. And so have we. These experiences, these writings were also a gift to us for what God will do for Mary, God will do for us. It's that promise that the Lord Jesus Christ made. I will be with you always, even till the end end, end of time. Even in those dark places when you know what is so desperate that we can't see, hear, or feel him. He's there. Giving us that strength to just plod on into the next day. And sometimes we need to look back in our own lives and draw on some of the wonderful experiences that we've had before even though they might seem very dim and distant. And you know that little trick that our heads play with us? Did I just make that all up? Was it real? I wonder if there were times when Mary thought, did that old fella get it wrong, old Simeon? You know, Anna, she was a lovely lady, bless her, but you know what? She was getting on a bit, and she was a bit odd. She stayed in the temple all her life, you know, (laughs) come on. I wonder if there were times if her head went off in that direction when it was getting really, really tough. And yet it says she kept these words in her heart. And sometimes we need to look back to those past experiences, those words of encouragement from somebody else, something that's happened in our lives that we've almost forgotten about. Or wondering if that experience that we had at that particular time was real or not. Yes, it is. And it's a God-given gift to keep you going and keep your faith alive no matter how 
how tough it gets, and no matter how many times we have a wobble, and we will have wobbles, and there will be things that really will shake our faith to the core. And you know what? That's scriptural. And if you read back through the Old Testament, the times that prophets cried out to God, shouted at him, if you like, what is going on? And I'm sure that young Mary did the same as her life progressed. As time goes on, we stop hearing about Joseph. Oh, here we find out things about him. We know that he's there. We know that he adopts the child. We know that he nurtures the child. We know that he's around even when the child gets a bit older. But as life goes on, we stop hearing about Joseph. And more than likely, Joseph had died by the time that Jesus starts his ministry because he becomes known more as Mary's son. I don't know at what stage Mary becomes a single parent. But you know what's for sure? God would have been with her through all of those tough, tough times. Now, in church tradition, the season of Christmas starts on Christmas Day and lasts for a fortnight. But in actual fact, folks, the season of Christmas lasts forever because it's something that we all need to carry. Because what happened there at that time is part of who we are. Now, we're not going to get out our jingly bells and our Christmas decorations every week or so just to remind us. We have other things that can, to, can remind us. And one of those things is in a wee bag that you got at the door this morning. Is in a wee cup that you've got inside that little bag. It serves as a reminder. It serves as a a reminder of who Jesus called us to be, his people. It serves as a reminder that he wants us to, to do this often, to share in this experience often as a reminder of who we are because of him. And as we journey on, we might celebrate Christmas once a year to remind us of the roots But we can do this far more often to remind us of that promise. I will be with you always, even to the end of time. So I'm going to ask you to take out your little cup. And there might be one or two people that didn't get them. I'm just going to grab some. Anyone not get any? I think that's... Oh, yeah, I'm at the back there. I've got a hand up. You go with you too. Make sure you're awake back here. And if you've never used these fiddly little things before, and they are a little bit fiddly, there's a little bit of almost see-through plastic on the top that you open first, which gives you the little, the little biscuit. Because on the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus broke the bread. And when he'd given thanks to God, he gave it out and said, this is my body broken for you. And then he took the cup. And said, this is the cup of the new covenant. A new deal with God, if you like. It's been sealed with my blood. This little one that was born for a purpose. And he asks us to do this often and regularly. So that we remember him. And in turn, remember who we are because of him. So let's talk to God right now. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you so much that you came. Your love was so strong and so powerful that you came to be one of us, to live amongst us. And not just to say, do this, do that, but to make the journey with us, to show us how to live and give us the strength to live that way. And we thank you for all that you have done today. 
And Lord, today we sit because of today's conditions with these little cups and these little tokens. But we know that you can use these We know that by your Holy Spirit, these can become special and remind us of how special you are and in turn, how special we are in your sight. So Holy Spirit, please come upon us. Please come upon the elements that we hold in our hands right now that as we share together, We also share that presence of your Holy Spirit touching our lives all over again. Amen. So take and eat, for this is the body of Christ broken for you. And this is the cup of the new covenant. Drink from it, all of you, and remember Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time because it's precious. We thank you for this time because it feeds us and feeds our faith. And we pray for your presence, leading and guiding us as we journey on, now and forever. Amen. You know, as we came this morning with these funny little cups, because of what we're having to do, because of COVID-19, and I need to say to you folks, I have no clue when we will ever be allowed to come around and hand out things again. Because that seems like something in the dim and distant past. It reminds me of a story that I once heard about a youngster. He was sitting at the table, And he'd been having his lunch with his family, and he'd finished. And the family were talking, and he just was getting bored, and he wanted to go off and do something else. So he kind of gets up, and he goes to move away, and his dad says, where are you going? I want to know, no, no, sit down, sit down. We're all together. We're all here as a family today, so sit down. So he goes, after a couple of minutes, he gets up again. And his dad says, sit down. And this carried on. And tempers were getting flared. And in the end, his dad says, would you sit down? And he sat down and he said, I'm sitting down. But in my head, I'm standing up. (laughs) And whenever we have to take those little cups, there are times when we have felt battered and bruised as a church because of COVID restrictions. Restrictions that I'm not moaning about because it had to be done to keep you all safe. But at a time whereby churches were closed, we couldn't get our heads around that. And at a time whereby you're not allowed to hand out things like that, you think, what is happening? And then we get these little cups. And my head says, I might be sitting down, but in my head I'm standing up. And it's all still real. And the Holy Spirit continues to sustain us Whatever the 2022 journey will be, we know that God will make that journey with us. So, just before we come to our closing carol, we'll take a moment as we take up our offering. Let us pray. 
Loving God, we thank you for your gifts. Forgive us when you put them right in front of us and we don't even notice. Forgive us when you have been providing us with strength and we haven't even realized. We thank you for the gift of your son. How precious. What a wonderful gift. Forgive us when we take him for granted. Forgive us when we put him to one side. Today we make our gifts to you. And may we uphold that line in the carol that we sang earlier. What can I give? Give my heart. So may the gifts that we make today not be just financial, but be our lives. And we ask that you would sustain our faith and direct our paths, now and evermore. Amen. So our closing carol, of course, it has to be, O come all ye faithful, especially for the faithful who are here today, and also for the faithful who are watching at home as well. So let's stand and sing together. Please remember there's no 11 C's this week on Thursday, but we'll be back on the week after that. This week, I, I did manage to get a shower. You know, I said there was a tradition in our family that Boxing Day was a pyjama day. And I was actually talking about coming over in my PJs today, but I didn't. But tomorrow will be the pyjama day. So this week we're having a bit of a break. But the following week, Elevensies will be back on. Let's sing this wonderful song together. Oh, come all ye faithful.
So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.